What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and as always, it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. What's got the most powerful legs in gaming and a hatred for shin bones? That's right, the Tomb Raider series, where each title furthers the ongoing fascination with seeing the main character enter into a full-body osteoporosis state. Here, we've got the third title to this rebooted series. Lara travels to South America just soon after the ending of Rise of the Tomb Raider 2. Well, yeah, raid some tombs, fight some bad guys, and slowly, if the PR's been accurate, come into her own as a character. Let's see if she did, shall we? Tomb Raider is going to be out September 14th for $59.99 for the PC, Xbox, and PS4. Also, one thing to mention, the embargo on this is insanely tight on restricting what can be shown after particular locations. So you'll just have to sort of deal with this footage. We'll be able to see some later locations after that embargo drops. As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Muay Thai Shinbones, Cringer from He-Man as a bad guy, and answering that age-old question, does Lara belong in a museum? Graphics are first. Yeah, it's Tomb Raider, which means for the most part it's a well-laid-out and organic world. It's got a mixture of complex architectures for the puzzles and well-laid traps from ancient civilizations looking pretty good overall. This really isn't going to shatter the graphical foundations of current titles as we see, though. One area that does look fantastic is when Lara gets covered with mud and looks like a cross between Arnold Schwarzenegger from The Predator and a third-degree burn victim. Hilarity aside, when she leaps into the bushes or crawls along the wall, there's this epic look and feeling to everything, and it does a really insane job selling that she's finally actually coming into her own a bit when it comes to abilities. Now, character faces and texturing run from okay to excellent, but sometimes it can border a little bit on the odd. Whenever you go to a busy spot, you can end up talking to a group of people and all of them look identical, warning us of both the limits of technology as well as the dangers of banging our own cousins. Now, that being said, they still look good or a bit better than Rise, depending on where you are. But it's the locations that are both the strength of and the weaknesses here in this Tomb Raider game. South America is incredibly organic. It's got lush vegetation and locations to hide out and wait to put another ventilation hole in an enemy's head. Or when you dive face first into a deep puzzle cave like a human submarine powered by only curiosity and a complete lack of personal safety requirements. The lighting overall in those areas looks fantastic. Also, since you can turn off exploration pathing. The game can go from a spot-to-spot -spot sprint, where it looks like someone painted every single cliff, crag, carabiner, and cavern edge with a white paint like a giant team of safety engineers came before you and said, man, we just can't have people die in here. And then you turn it off, which allows you to basically have to figure out and look exactly when and where you can go, and this adds a bit of danger. That, to me, is something that I think every game should add if it has this kind of exploration. Now, many of the animations, both in and out of combat, do have some similarities to Rise. Don't expect anything to be wholly different, but I think most people understand that. Unfortunately, when you look at the locations, Rise just had more interesting locations overall for me personally. Almost the entire game of Shadows based in the jungle, and after a couple hours, it can feel a little bit samey. When it comes to performance, the PS4 is 1080p on the Pro and the X, it's 1080p 60fps or 4K at 30fps, and with the PC, it's whatever FPS your bank account can throw at it. Now, HDR is an option here. It works well to increase the overall picture quality, but this is not earth-shattering HDR. This footage here you'll see from me is both native 4K at 30 as well as 1080p at 60. I found the 60 FPS better overall as I played with exploration and its safety markers oft after initial testing and required a little bit faster reflexes overall. One element, though, that rises above anything in any of the Tomb Raider games prior are the underwater sections here. They trump anything that's ever been done. They're huge. They require a bit of survival thinking as well. They're tense, and they're fully 360, making it feel like this otherworldly place. It's one of the few games where underwater levels really do add a feeling of exploring something unique and as large as your overworld areas. I think Shadow of the Tomb Raider looks good, but it doesn't really elevate itself above Rise. We don't have the ray tracing because the NVIDIA cards aren't here for that. It does look good, but there's nothing here that really masters that magnificence of the geothermal valley in the original game. So overall, excellent, but I would have loved a little bit more variety. Sound, music, and voice. I don't know. The next volume picks up in Syria. I think we can get out that way. Jonah, help me with this. On three, two, one.
let's do sound first. This is actually really good. This builds on the magnificent sound structure that Rise had and absolutely elevates it. The first time you enter into an underwater abyss of some cave complex, long flooded after all the natives inside use it for a cannibal circus, it can get downright eerie with all those sounds muffling perfectly. The sound effects also have an excellent punch to them, but when walking through the jungle or just exploring, you can hear all manner of environmental sounds, which really do elevate the entire surrounding into feeling like you're really exploring a jungle. Sound has never been a problem with these titles, and it continues to be excellent here. Music. So this is actually a combination of composers who work on this, with the main music handled by Brian Oliveira, whose use of native South American instruments does a really fantastic job acting as this audio concrete to solidify the foundation of the score with the location. But also you have Martin Anderson, who's recently worked on Limbo and Inside, who handles the eerie moments in the underwater sections where the music changes dramatically. That's one thing to remember here is that you have those big changes with the underwater sections where you really are in them a lot. When compared to the other games, I'd say this might be a little less cinematic, but overall it fits perfectly with the game and I liked it a lot. Voice. So again, we have Camilla Ludington play this character and does a really good job as well as handle the motion capture for the game. And she continues to offer a nice sophistication to Laura as you're bouncing around unceremoniously off of logs into spike pits into fiery pyres and all manner of hazards. This is a slightly different Laura than the past ones where it was a bit more of a silent bravado, but also there was some careworn tact to her voice then. Here she's a bit more vocal about what's going on as a whole, and that adds a nice human feeling to it when she starts to realize that somersaulting into someone's ancient tombs and kicking the ever-living shit out of all their priceless heirlooms is probably going to have some kind of repercussion. Though, while I liked Laura and who she partners with, I didn't think the main enemy ever really resonated with me at all, instead coming across as some generic bad guy whose main awesome boss died the day before and he was suddenly thrust into a leadership role and then just froze. It's not bad, it just doesn't really do anything for me. Jonah, on the other hand, continues to be excellent with a nice rendition of the side dude with a tood being split down the middle with a caring, older, bigger brother. And now it's time for the big dog, which is gameplay and a bit about the story. Now, Tomb Raider starts where, let's be honest, I think they all should have started, and that's Laura and Deep Shit. Set a bit after Rise, she's gotten herself into trouble once again by setting the stage for the end of the world, supposedly. She's fresh off stealing an ancient relic that can maybe possibly bring on the apocalypse and then comes right into the crosshairs of an organization, Trinity, which also wants the relic for themselves so they can reshape the world if they combine it with another relic. Convoluted, you ask? Surprisingly enough, not really. You see, while you do investigate these main elements as a story, much of Tomb Raider is refreshingly free of that constant narrative hanging moment and instead shows both the micro and macro side of Laura's actions as she plays out with these big cutscene moments offsetting the more subdued telling of this frantic person trying to fight the wrongs that she's done, as well as her continual discovering of new abilities she has. Take, for instance, those new skills. Laura can stealth with the best of her now, covering herself in questionably made up mud and hiding in vines for unsuspecting enemies. Or now she's able to lower and repel off rock faces, which offers a flexibility to movement as well as the puzzle makeup. But I said it before, and I gotta say it again, it's the underwater areas that astound me. I'm telling you, she might as well have gills, not because she can hold her breath forever, though she'd probably make a deep sea diver a bit jealous. It's just that the areas are massive with their own gameplay elements, like hiding in underwater flora as piranha swim over your head, and trust me, if they even get close to you, you're dead. Now, these underwater sections are also silent. She can't narrate, obviously, and it offers an excellent negative space to work with once you start to move around the game's map and explore. As you're doing so, you're going to notice some similarities as well as a couple differences with Rise. When it comes to similarities, of course, you're exploring strange tombs, finding secrets, and discovering new locations. And I'm going to say that there were a couple different climbs that you're going to find here that give you that stomach tingly feeling as you're thousands of feet above the jungle. And the only thing keeping you up is a very suspect cord the hook at the end. But when it comes to the stealth, that really does change up the way Laura plays, as well as the AI and the ability to break off and come back into battle that I felt offered something unique here. Now, when it comes to the skills, they're upgradable just as we've had before, but they have a South American artistic slant to them, which admittedly made knowing what each skill did or remembering them actually a little bit harder than I think they overall planned. It's a small quibble, but you can notice it. Now, the skills run the gamut from auto-searching enemies during kills to swimming longer, finding more items and stashes, and so forth. Nothing really surprising here and a good connection to the prior games. There are a couple cool skills when it comes to story unlocked ones. 
Of course, the one thing we've heard a lot about is this hub world kind of area and how the game offers side quests. It is massive, I'll give them that, with a couple city towns that do an excellent job offering a more subtle background to the action-packed antics of the prior games. Here you can listen to native stories, discuss the ongoing situations with those that inhabit the towns, and even trade for items at shops. That's actually one of the bigger changes, is it does sort of allow for these folks who maybe are missing out on one element when you're playing that you need to craft something with, and it gives you the ability to just outright maybe buy that if you want to sell some of your other valuable items. It's a nice change up and it didn't really break the pace. Tomb Raider though would suck if of course the control wasn't pretty spot on and I can say it is mostly. Depending on the difficulty you can turn off the auto aim which offers a nice extra bump in skill but the way the aiming works seems like there's some sort of acceleration just enough that finding a bead on the enemy can take a bit more time than it should or at least getting used to. Stealth kills, of course, are amazing, but the AI is not really improved since the original game. Sure, you can now sort of hide from enemies and disengage and scuttle around, but they're not really much more intelligent than they were in the last game. So if the AI bothered you in the last Tomb Raider, it's probably going to bother you here. One thing that this Tomb Raider does is it adds a ton of accessibility options, so you can make combat easy and puzzle solving hard and exploration in the middle ground or set them all to the hardest. Then in the audio section, you have a ton of settings like the ability to hear the game's NPCs talk in their native tongue or in your specified language. You can do big subtitles, colored subtitles, and a couple other options. This is very useful for those who may need that kind of thing or sit far away from the TV and maybe you can't see a subtitle. This game lasts about 15 hours for the main story, which is pretty much exactly the same as the last game. And then you add in the challenge tombs and all of the secrets on top of it. In fact, overall, it is a bit longer than Rise because it does have more challenge tombs as well as those extended water exploration sections, which of course, just due to their makeup, don't allow you to really rush like the Overland sections do. All this, of course, also depends, like I said, on the difficulty on if you play stealthy or shoot it out and so forth. Fun factor. So there's really no denying there are some amazing moments here, like wrapping an enemy around the neck with a well-placed rope arrow and then yanking them to choke them out. Or that first time you leap into the roots overhanging a cliff and Laura sort of blends in and you want to whisper over here like the predator. These are amazing moments in the game and it does seem to sway a bit more towards the tomb raiding and not the life ending that the past games have had. It does, in fact, overall feel less like you're exploring the jungle one enemy death at a time versus actually exploring it yourself. That being said, that sense of exploration for me, despite the massive and amazing underwater areas, was hurt a bit compared to Rise. It's that lack of incredibly defined locations that Rise had that made it feel like such a difficult act to follow. Shadow tries to up the ante with this large hub-based area and tons of people to interact with, but they suffer the same thing I think the smaller locations in Rise actually did, and that's limited interaction. I like those spots, though. They just didn't really offer exactly what I was hoping for. With Rise, I really felt like one thing that elevated it was those challenge tombs. And I gotta say, deep in a challenge tomb here, my god, the game can be a blast. Well-greased ancient mechanisms that somehow move easier than your own kitchen cabinet doors do await you at every turn as you try to figure out how to get a puzzle with countless pieces all moving in the same direction, all while staving off myriad traps and dangers set around you. It works really well. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for a sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale with rent being replaced by deep, deep sale on PC. This is a buy, but it's tentative. You really need to understand what you're going into. If you liked Rise, you'll probably like this. If you like the challenge tombs of Rise, you will probably like this even more. There's a lot of unique elements, and those underwater spots in this game really do show what somebody could do if they aimed and focused just on that. At the same time, though, when you're exploring, you do notice that most of the time it is just that jungle, and that can get a little bit dreary over long periods of time. I gotta say, I was pretty surprised by this game. I wasn't necessarily expecting it to go away from the bloodshed of Rise and just the overt ballistics that that game sometimes offered and sort of set it back just a little bit here, offer more challenge tombs. And that exploration and that sense of tomb raiding in this game is incredibly high. So for people who maybe weren't a fan of Rise as much, weren't a fan of that ballistic exploration you did in Rise, where apparently you're using shotguns for compasses, this sort of replaces that. So anyway, that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Maybe check out Reddit or follow me on Twitter. And of course, you can become a patron on the Patreon website, where you can continue to help me give you guys reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.